Every time I feel like I've had the last word considering the Marvels, something new happens. A new barrier has broken, a new rock bottom reached for the MCU, Marvel Studios, Disney, and all that kind of stuff. The people had their word. They said, the Marvels blows, we're not happy with the MCU, and we're not supporting your shitty movie. And now Disney have had their word, and they've decided, you guys are right, the Marvels has no future. It's basically dead. After four weeks on the big screen, the comic book tentpole is running out of steam with $80 million in North America and $197 million globally. There would typically be optimism that attendance could rebound over the busy holiday season, but Disney apparently doesn't expect that to be the case because it won't be reporting the film's weekend box office results any longer. The studio wrote on Sunday in a note to press, with the Marvel's box office now winding down, we will stop weekend reporting of international global grosses on this title. And it had settled down to like, you know, 11th place after only three or four weeks, which is just, uh, it's mind boggling. I remember when they announced the Marvel's and what it was going to be and the main characters, I was like, man, I'll, I'll be surprised if this thing really can go over 650 million. Then you start getting the reports about all the reshoots and the fact that there isn't a whole lot of interest. I'm like, maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe it's more like $450 million worldwide might be the high water mark. And then you see the numbers keep going lower and lower. And I'm like, could it struggle to hit 300 million? And now it's actually struggled to hit $200 million globally, which is absolutely shocking. And it has no chance of hitting $100 million uh, domestically setting new uh, low water marks for the MCU in total, a franchise that's been around for 15 years at this point. And people used to make fun of the Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton because it was the MCU movie no one remembers because it didn't do very well. And it absolutely beat the crap out of the Marvels. Like It's mind-blowing that Kevin Feige, Marvel Studios, Disney, Bob Iger could absolutely destroy the MCU as a franchise this quickly. Now, I do believe they will have the chance to rebound, but it's going to take some work. We obviously saw with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, even a slow start can be overcome with good word of mouth. That was not the case for the Marvels. And just how bad is it? How bad is the Marvels run going to be in comparison to some of these other flops, you know, just worldwide flops that we've had in 2023? And then some of the Disney stinkers we've had lately. The Flash did $108 million domestically, so almost $30 million more. $270 million worldwide, so another $70 million more. And The Flash was universally panned and made fun of because The Flash is an awful movie. And somehow it absolutely stomped the crap out of the Marvels. Remember Black Adam, the movie that basically forced The Rock out of Warner Brothers and the DCEU? Did $195 million domestically, doubled the Marvels, over double the Marvels, and $393 million total worldwide, doubled the Marvels, absolutely stopped it. Dial of Destiny, which is going to go down as one of the biggest money losers of all time, did $170 million domestically, $384 million globally, destroyed the Marvels. Quantumania, which is really uh, the first MCU movie that didn't open up like they thought it would, and then just crashed absolutely like a rock afterwards. Ended up doing $214 million domestically, $476 million globally. Absolutely annihilates <laughs> the Marvels. The Little Mermaid, which is considered an enormous uh, flop by Disney because all their live action remakes were doing a billion dollars, did $298 million domestically, $570 million globally. Absolutely annihilating, obviously, uh, the performance of the Marvels. We have to go to the animation side to find something that actually does worse than the Marvels that actually costs around the same amount of money to make. Although Strange World's budget is significantly lower, but it's still really close to $200 million. That one did $38 million domestically, $74 million globally. So at least the Marvels beat the crap out of like the, uh, the retarded kids movie that no one liked, <laughs> which is pretty crazy, but... You got that for you, Brie Larson. You didn't lose to Strange World. You absolutely annihilated it. But that does give you some, some context for just how bad the Marvels has performed. In fact, probably worse than anybody, even the biggest naysayers probably could have expected. I don't think anybody would have predicted that the Marvels would struggle mightily to go over $200 million globally and not even snip $100 million domestically. As the film nears the end of its theatrical run, uh, box office revenues won't top 2008's The Incredible Hulk, 
$264 million, not adjusted for inflation, which previously stood as the lowest grossing entry. The Marvels is also the first Marvel film that failed to cross the $100 million mark at the domestic box office. This means the sequel's entire big screen run didn't come close to matching the opening weekend of its predecessor, 2019's Captain Marvel, with $153 million during its debut weekend. So Captain Marvel, which was in prime time real estate there, stuck kind of in holiday season right between Infinity War and Endgame. You were told you needed to see it because Captain Marvel would be appearing and playing a big role in Endgame. Did $153 million in three days on its opening weekend basically uh, 50% more than the Marvels was able to do for its entire theatrical run, or even more than that. It's almost double it. Oh, man, that's that's um, really, really shocking stuff. But it is definitely a rebuke against the MCU and Kevin Feige and Bob Iger and all the crap that they've been throwing into the MCU as of late. They've been, they thought they could put anything on the big screen, call it Marvel, and people would pay money to go see it. It turns out you can't take a dump, film it, and call it a movie and people will go and, and enjoy it because there's no real trust there anymore. Uh, not only not with Disney, but certainly not with Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige, that they're actually going to deliver something that's unique and enjoyable and an experience that you want to enjoy that's even leading to something. Although the Marvels was a direct sequel to like four different things. It was a sequel to Captain Marvel. It was a sequel to Miss Marvel. It was a sequel to... A uh, WandaVision and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, and I guess it was actually a sequel to a uh, Secret Invasion. So it was like five things. I wonder why everyone wasn't just super excited to see this. Maybe people didn't want to do five programs worth of homework just to understand what was going on with the characters going in. And the, the MCU just got way too big for its britches, thought they could do anything. They could just hire any Tom, Dick, and Harry off the street and say, you know what? You're a minority female. You need to write and direct an MCU movie because we want more diversity rather than going out there and finding the best writers, the best directors, the best cinematographers, going out there and mining the best stories of the best characters out there. They thought they could jump to all new, all different Marvel or Marvel Now or Marvel Legacy and mine literally the worst stories possible that everyone rejected that have been reading comic books for 80 years and, and thought people would just accept it. It's not the case. Of course, Bob Iger has another reason that the Marvels didn't succeed. It's not that people are fed up with him. It's not that people are fed up with Kevin Feige. It's not that people are fed up with absolute garbage on the screen. It was COVID. Disney CEO Bob Iger has addressed the movie's poor theatrical performance, suggesting that pandemic-related production restrictions ended up plaguing the final result. Iger recently stated the Marvels was shot during COVID. There wasn't as much supervision on set, so to speak, where we have executives that are really looking over what's being done day after day after day after day. It's shocking that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I believe, was also a COVID-19 pandemic era production for Disney Studios, and it turned out just fine. It turned out it felt just like a Guardians of the Galaxy movie and a perfectly nice capstone ending edition of the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy and people supported it to the tune of almost $900 million. Why did Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which had the same issues that was plaguing the Marvels, work while the Marvels failed? Maybe it's because James Gunn has actually made movies before. Maybe he had actually made successful movies before. Maybe even before he showed up in the MCU, he had made superhero movies before. <laughs> He'd written movies that he didn't direct that were successful. It turns out if you get someone that's talented to actually run a production as the director and all this stuff, it's not too much. You don't need eternal oversight to make sure that you don't shit out one of the worst movies in the history of the MCU. So I would say the biggest problem with this production is Kevin Feige under the direction of Bob Iger, followed by Bob Chapik, and then Bob Iger again going out of their way to do DEI stuff rather than finding the most talented people in the history of the world to make movies with the most successful franchise in the history of the world. They didn't think they had to deliver quality anymore, and I think that's really the big problem. Of course, there are a lot of people talking about superhero movie fatigue. I imagine that's a little bit of it, but I don't think that's the whole story, and it doesn't sound like I'm the only one believing that. Box office analysts do not believe that superhero fatigue is once and for all plagued the masses. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 made $845 million, was a hit over the summer, 
and Deadpool 3, starring Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, is expected to be a smash in 2024. But the Marvels is the clearest indication that comic book fans will no longer reliably show up to theaters just because the Marvel logo appears in front of a movie. Disney still has several MCU movies on the horizon, but it may have to retool the future of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. The studio recently postponed Captain America, A Brave New World, Thunderbolts, and Blade to 2025 because of strike-related production delays. And it sounds like Captain America, A Brave New World is unsalvageable probably at this point. I believe they have to reshoot uh, massive amounts. I think they think it's going to be five months worth of reshoots on that just to hopefully make it work. If you saw the introduction of Falcon Cap in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, if that's the character they're putting on the big screen, it's not going to work and no one's going to support that movie. Uh, Thunderbolt is more of a wild card. There's been a lot of upheaval with that one as well. But as far as the stuff they expect to reach theaters in 2025, it's probably had the smoothest sailing. And that's kind of weird because it has been smooth. And then Blade probably has the best chance to be redeemed and fixed because they actually haven't started filming anything yet. They're actually rewriting everything and going out there and finding all new talent to write the movie, helm the movie, and maybe make a Blade movie that can stand the test of time against what Wesley Snipes did back in the day when Blade was absolutely amazing and Blade 2 is somehow even better. Bring Guillermo del Toro back. You know what I'm talking about? An actual visionary, a real filmmaker. Uh, we shall see what happens with Deadpool 3. It doesn't feel like it's in the MCU. You know what I mean? Deadpool has never had an association with the MCU. I imagine there's going to be an end credit scene or something within the movie that at least tangentially ties it into the MCU. I don't think anybody wants to see that. But for the most part, I'm expecting, and I think a lot of people are expecting, Deadpool 3 to feel like its own unique thing, kind of separate from all the crap that Kevin Feige's been uh, dealing to us. Ryan Reynolds is still heavily involved. He was with Deadpool from the very beginning, definitely oversaw the production of the first two films. Me, personally, I think Deadpool 2 sucks. Like, I think Deadpool is really, really funny, but it's kind of like the same jokes over and over in the second movie but just not as good. It's almost like watching The Hangover, and then you watch The Hangover 2, and you kind of laugh a lot less. Then, you know, I remember getting to The Hangover 3, and I wasn't laughing at all because it was so boring and played out. Hopefully they have something else besides just Hugh Jackman showing up as Wolverine in the the gold and blue costume, which is awesome, and I do want to see. But hopefully they actually have some original material and a new direction to go with Deadpool. Uh, because me personally... It got old fast in Deadpool 2. And in fact, I don't believe I even finished the movie, even though I was like super looking forward to Cable. I was like, Josh Brolin is Cable? Yeah, that seems to make a whole lot of sense. And um, it did not work out in my mind. But I don't think Deadpool 3 is a guaranteed billion dollar movie either. I don't think it's a guaranteed $750 million, you know, worldwide kind of movie because people are skeptical of the MCU. They're skeptical of Kevin Feige. They're skeptical of the Marvel Studios logo and brand being associated with the movie nowadays. When we saw that, you know, starting out with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which absolutely did huge numbers, and then you started seeing that creep down as people realized that wasn't nearly as good as the first movie, and I don't know where they're going, but I don't really like it anymore. And for me, you know, Thor Love and Thunder is objectively awful. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is objectively awful, and they're having a string of not very good movies with you know, obviously Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 kind of sandwiched in there, which I did enjoy. Not as good as the first movie, but certainly was better than the second movie, in my opinion. And I thought there was a lot of good stuff going on there. I was glad to see it with my wife on a date night, and we had a lot of fun with it. But they need to bring back real filmmakers again, and they got to stop blaming the pandemic for everything. You guys fucked up your own franchise. You fucked up your own universe. You gave people a reason to walk away. Now it's time to go and fix stuff. Now, it sounds like they're making wholesale changes. They're changing out the writers, directors. They're changing out the direction. We'll see what happens. But I still think Captain America, Brave New World, destined for failure. Not sure if it'll be Marvel's level failure, because I do think it appeals to a broader audience, but I do not think it'll ever even sniff you know, the numbers of something like a Captain America Civil War or Winter Soldier or anything like that. I think that one's destined to fail as well. And the other two projects, Thunderbolts and Blade in 2025, probably you could have more hope, but I wouldn't have any faith in it because um, 
It has not been going well. It hasn't been going well for a long time. The best part about the Marvels bombing so badly is the absolute cope going on. In fact, I found an article on Forbes.com uh, that I just had to made fun of. This is just me having fun for like 18 minutes straight making fun of this guy. And I think my editor did a pretty damn good job on this one as well. But definitely check this out if you haven't seen it yet because this is a different side of Wes where I was not taking anything seriously and having a good time. There's also a link in the video description.